So now that we've talked about how to get those rating curves, let's talk about how to calibrate it to the observed data. This is probably one of the most important pieces of this because some of the other stuff is sort of plug and chug, um, just making sure you've got the right information. But this part is going to require some iteration and some judgment from you to dis to do, um, determine what is the what you're going to consider your best estimate reservoir model. So in this lecture, we are going to discuss the calibration of the RMC stage frequency curve to historic events. We're going to examine the stage frequency curve and determine if adjustments need to be made to the discharge rating curve that's used in the reservoir routing. We're also going to briefly discuss various dam operations and methods to calibrate the discharge rating curve. And then we're going to step through an example for a project. Before running a full uncertainty simulation in RMC RFA, because remember those can be a little bit longer, maybe like 20 minutes or, you know, a little bit longer of a runtime, it's important to run a few preliminary calibration runs using the expected only option. And the purpose of the calibration runs is to ensure that the simulated stage frequency curve fits well within the empirical stage frequency curve derived previously in the empirical stage frequency analysis section. If the simulated stage frequency curve plots well compared to the observed data, then we will have more confidence in the estimated exceedance probabilities for much rarer floods, such as those that would cause overtopping. In this example, some adjustments should be made to the discharge rating curve used in the reservoir routing. And you can hopefully see that really obviously here. We're matching the lower or more frequent floods, but we're really not anywhere close at this point to the upper or the, you know, the largest floods that have been observed in the basin. By examining operations during past events, you'll be able to better understand how the project is typically operated. This image shows how flood control dams typically operate during flood events. In many cases, the outflow is reduced to minimum flows during the rising limb of a hydrograph to store flood water and minimize downstream damages. Then as the pool reaches the top of flood pool, outflows are typically increased either due to flows through an uncontrolled spillway or by gate operations for a gated spillway according to a set of spillway operating rules. And in this picture, you can see the red is the inflow hydrograph, the green is the outflow hydrograph, and then the blue in the top portion is the pool elevation hydrograph. There are several reservoir calibration methods for, defi for refining the discharge curve used in RMC RFA, and several techniques are discussed in detail in the TR 2018-03 inflow-based approach to estimating stage frequency for dams. This document details how to develop a discharge rating curve by plotting the stage and discharges observed at the project. If trends can be fitted within reason, this could be used as a starting point for the curve. Another method discussed in the RMC publication is utilizing HEC-HMS or another hydrologic routing program to develop a discharge curve that matches well to observed events. The third and most commonly used method is manually calibrating. In other words, you're going to mess around with it until it looks like how you want it to look. Um, so you're going to use information, you're not just going to blindly do that, of course. You're going to use the information from the water control manuals and historic events, which we'll discuss in the next few slides. For this example, so I'm going to give you several examples of how to do this, and several examples, these are real um, examples. For this example, we'll look at Carlisle Dam, which is in southern Illinois. This structure's primary purpose is flood control and has four gates that regulate flow over a spillway. These gates are regularly loaded. For this project, we have 50 years of peak stage data, which can be seen on the empirical stage frequency curve there on the right. For the first simulation, the maximum discharge capacity rating curve was used as the starting reservoir model. A stage storage discharge curve was developed based on the public, excuse me, the published rating curves for the project. When using the maximum capacity rating curve, we can pretty much usually anticipate that the stage frequency curve will be lower than the observed points, since we know the project would not release maximum capacity discharges during a flood event. From the first run of the expected curve using that maximum capacity discharge rating curve, 
we can see that our assumption is correct. The green expected curve falls far below the observed empirical annual peak stages, which confirms that the project does indeed store water during these events. Given this model, what's our estimate of the annual exceedance probability at the top of flood pool elevation, which for this dam is 462.5 feet? So we'll look at that here. It's on the order of 4 e to the minus 6 AEP, which is about 1 in 250,000. However, this estimate is likely to be incorrect and unconservative, giving the poor calibration to our model, or to the observed data. So now we're going to have to pull out some documents so that we can do a better job of calibrating our model. So we'll look back at the elevation release guide curve, and we can see that the allowable discharge ranges from 4,000 CFS at elevation 445 to 10,000 CFS at elevation 462.5, which is also the top of the flood control pool. These flows are planned discharges for the typical flood events in this basin. However, since most dams have operating rules that allow variations in operation for extreme inflow events, as can be seen in the spillway rule curve for this project. For large inflows, the project op operating curve allows increasing gate openings, leading to increasing discharges. But RFA can only have one reservoir model at a time, so you have to use some iteration to match the observed events. The results of iterating on the stage discharge rating curve can be seen in this image of the expected curve which uses the recommended emergency release guide curve varying from 4,000 CFS at 445 to 10,000 CFS at 462.5. Now we're getting close to matching the observed events. What we can tell from this plot is that above elevation 455, the discharges from the, the guide curve appear to be too low, resulting in peak stages that are higher than the observed events. So that's the, this is the opposite situation that we talked about, right? Now the model is too high, so that means we're not releasing enough water at those elevations. We can do one more iteration by increasing the discharge between elevations 455 and 465 to better match the observed events. So that looks pretty good, right? I mean, above elevation 65, which is the top of flood control pool, the spillway rule curves require all spillway gates to be wide open so that we can use the maximum discharge capacity curve above that elevation. Now we have a reservoir routing model that agrees with the observed stage, um, stages, giving us more confidence in our stage frequency curve. Also, something that I'd like to point out is that we are most interested in the largest floods and most interested in matching those ones. So you'll notice that, the, that our curve runs right through those top four or five floods, and that's really the part we're most interested in. Um, this one happens to match all the way through the whole series pretty well, and that's really nice. That doesn't always happen, so keep that in mind. So let's revisit our estimate of the annual exceedance probability at the top of flood control. Given our calibrated model results, the estimate changed from about 4e to the minus 6 to about 8e to the minus 4. This is a change of more than two orders of magnitude, which could have a significant effect on the risk estimate. This is why it's so important to calibrate the reservoir model to obtain good agreement with the observed events. Here's another example of calibration to observed peak stage events for a gated dam. Solely by making adjustments to the best estimate reservoir model stage discharge rating curve, we were able to closely match the observed peak stage data. So that, as you can see on the left, that's using the full capacity, obviously doesn't match very well at all. And then just by making adjustments throughout the range of stages to the discharge, using the rule curves, um, we're able to match those observed data very well. So look at, um, basically the moral of the story is, we have higher confidence in the stage frequency curve now because especially in that, that less frequent end where we're going to be looking at top of dam and PMF type elevations um, for overtopping type failure modes or other failure modes that would have a high stage in your reservoir um, because we have good agreement in the observed section. All right, let's look at another example. The previous two examples were gated structures, so we had um, a lot of options um, 
when we were deciding what those flows were going to be. Um, now we're going to look at an ungated dam, Blakely Mountain Dam, which has uh, no gates or, in other words, an uncontrolled spillway. If we start by assuming the maximum discharge capacity for the regulating outlets, we can see that the stage frequency curve predicted by our model has poor agreement with the observed events. The plot of the standard design flood displays the operation rules for extreme flood events. Releases during the rising portion of a typical flood are practically zero when the stage is below the, st the spillway crest. So in other words, they're not letting water out of those little outlets. Um, when it's below the spillway crest. It's common for flood control dams to release minimum flows below the spillway crest during flood events to maximize downstream benefits. And then they release the stored flood water only after the peak of the event has occurred. Therefore, a discharge of practically zero would be more appropriate in our model for elevations below the spillway crest. Even with these practically zero outflows in the model, the observed stages still plot higher than the model results, especially for the more frequent events. This can't be resolved any further by modifying the stage discharge curve because the outflow can't be less than zero CFS. We're already not releasing any water there. We can't change that. So, The frequent annual maximum events are mostly due to regulation based on the seasonal guide curves and not due to flood events. For this type of situation, calibration can sometimes be improved by evaluating the flood seasonality using annual maximum stage rather than flow. So remember yesterday I kind of mentioned that that was the reason that we would do this. So now you can see that firsthand. This is a situation where we might want to use the other, the stage-based um, seasonality instead of the inflow-based. Okay, so for this example, a flood seasonality based on stage was calculated using the largest 75% of the annual maximum stages for a total of 37 events. When this is done, there's an improvement in the match there, especially in that more frequent end. There's still a difference between the model curve and the observed events from the very most frequent events. However, since we're most interested in the infrequent events, or the, the largest floods, those minor differences are acceptable. 